right to dance. 81st matchup between these two longtime rivals as we take a look at the starting lineups brought to you by Sintas. And it looks like this for East Tennessee State. Cromer, McLean, Gwynn, and Bellow in a four-guard offense with Isaac Banks who played excellent basketball last night. On the other hand, for Chattanooga, Pryor, Robertson in the backcourt, Esther, McLean, and Toyo up front for Matt McCall. Both these guys, as I mentioned, first year at their respective schools. We're ready to see who's going to go to the NCAA tournament. Well, what you should be ready to see as well over the next 40 minutes are teams that are going to get after it. They're going to press. They're going to play free at the offensive end of the floor. You've got some great athleticism on the floor. It's going to be a lot of fun. They played in the game earlier this year where it was 94-84 final, so expect some scoring. Chattanooga took both regular season games during the regular season, 94-84 and 76-68. But... John and I watching the semifinals last night. <laughs> These teams get up and down the court, and I don't think we're going to have to worry a lot about the shot clock today. No, but if you're East Tennessee State, you've got to be worried about fouling because fouls were a big problem in the first two meetings that they had this year. The differential at the free throw line was noticeable. They were outscored by 13 points per game in both of those meetings. Here's a hook on the inside. Toyo. Who was defensive player of the year in this conference? And so this is ETSU's first trip that court. Here's the guy that's done most of the damage this year. Elon Gwynn on the drive. Crazy shot, it went in. And he's fouled. Right Actually, ball. it's offensive foul on him. Two fouls already, and that one takes off the basket. He's going to do a lot of that last night. They're going to play free, and you know you got to take the good and the bad. I thought that was a pretty good drive, and I thought that one easily could have been a block and an N1 opportunity. Robertson feeds down. It's Toyo again in the lane. He'll try to hook one more time. Still off the mark. And the rebound comes to Deuce Bellow. On the run going the other way. Bellow up under and out. And it's cleared by Robertson. Have to be able to convert that. Open floor situation. You're driving to the rim. You just can't flick it up there. You've got to be able to extend up and softly use the glass. And that's going to be the second foul on Peter McClain. That didn't take long, did it? And the problem with Petey McLean is he is a great facilitator for their offense, uh, but even more importantly is his defense ability to initiate their defensive pressure at the point of attack. He's not going to be facilitating anything where he's heading right now. And that's deceit number two for maybe the rest of the half. Pryor looking for a screen. He's going to try to take it all the way. Does. In close. Got his own miss. And a walk. And Toyo. Out the nerves. And, and, you know, as coaches were talking about handling 50-50 balls, handling the pressure. Next play, next play. No one's gotten to that next play yet. <laughs> I know you're right. They're tight. They understand this is a championship game. This is not uncommon to see teams play a little tight to start with. Missing a lot of easy shots around the basket. Figure for that to be able to settle down here in the next minute or so. Now the guy who won the point is DeSante Bradford. And he may run that spot for most of this half. Whoops, almost forgot to take the ball with him. Eight on the shot clock. Cromer on the drive. Partially blocked underneath there by Toyo. And he comes to the baseline to pick up the loose ball. Robertson. Gets it back, moves it around. Pryor got an open look. Knocks down the deuce. Or score of the game. Well, what the score does is it allows them to get into their pressure. You see a little run and jump press here. They bring the trap, and then they have to rotate out of it. That one's going up. Gwynn for three. Got it. Catch and shoot. Jalen Gwynn. ETSU at one point late. They spent the whole time at shoot around talking about it. even when they're pressing, even when they're running their stuff, they've got to be able to match up out of it. And he was the one guy they didn't want to leave open. McLean will try to triple of his own. 
And nothing but Navy jerseys underneath there. Bella pulls down the rebound. That would need a little help. And again, they've got to kick it outside. Nice defense by Toyo underneath. Wind's going to let this one fly in a second. There it goes. <laughs> in and out. Hey. We know it. Everybody in the building knows it. He doesn't have a red or a yellow light in the offensive <laughs> set. It's green at all times. Hey, Robertson got the green light and knocked down a three. The most prolific three-point shooter for the Mox. He's got great range. He's made more. He's taken more three-point shots on the season than anybody else in the team. 79th that he's dropped in. Gives his team the lead four minutes into the game. Bello, he'll try three. Got it. But he's settling in a little bit now. And not a strength of his game, a 30% three-point shooter play. The percentage is there. Pryor takes his 17-footer. Loose ball. The officials are going to confirm. It'll be ETSU's ball after the timeout. Early in the game. And the Bucks by one. Neither team has found its rhythm so far. We'll see if after the first time out, you know, it's like the first round of a boxing match. You're just kind of feeling each other out. Two teams that are very familiar with one another. Let's we'll see if they start to settle in. Again, Bradford's having to play the point with Petey McLean out in the opening about 70 seconds with two fouls. And now with that in mind, they're going to move Cromer out there at times, too. He's with it right now. And Wilson, the baseline jumper is no good. Jonathan Burroughs Cook in the lineup for the first time for the Mox. And he's going to put it up short. Now he put it up long. I got it. That's great floor spacing there. Gwynn was isolated. He had two guys that he could run at. He kind of got caught in between both of them. The extra pass, that one more pass, the unselfish look. A nice free shot from the outside. Until he was 15 3 of the year, and he was shooting 27% from out there. Bromer with five on the shot clock. He'll take a three. He's going to get his own rebound, though. Got it to Gwynn, who sets and fires. Got another one. Geelong Gwynn with six. Cannot give him that much space. The transfer from Cincinnati. He is a, as confident as they come. Whoa! Duke Etheridge <laughs> from way outside. And he's most noted for his strength, ability to go to the basket. He had a great dunk last night. You and I were watching. We, we were watching him last night and said, okay, he's got it, been a football player, and you said that was the case. The outside linebacker in high school, all American. Had a lot of Division One offers to play football, but instead decided eventually he'd end up with the mocks and got his feet set. The three-point shot working for both teams early tonight. Back-to-back -to -back made shots. That one was from NBA beyond land. NBA range. Yeah. <laughs> Duke Etheridge. He wears it well, the name Duke. He's alone. Here's Gwen. Backup jumper. Loose ball. There's a 50-50 ball. One by the Mox this time. The girls Cook not afraid to shoot. Lost oh. taking three shots since he came off the bench. Well, a lot of these drives are ended up with off-balance shots, partner. And they got to be able to get their feet set. I don't mind it. You want to be aggressive. You want to attack. That's fine. But we've seen both teams drifting as they're trying to finish. Cromer just inside the three-point line. That rebound. Off to D. Oldham. And that's Pryor again off balance in the lane. Did draw a foul. And Pryor does an excellent job getting to the free throw line and making free throws. 79% on the season. 
had 16 points last night to go with three rebounds and five assists as the box beat Western Carolina 73 69. There you go. Well, he's had a good season, not shooting it quite as well as he did a year ago. Got into foul trouble in the quarterfinals here, only attempted two shots in 15 minutes of play, but bounced back, as you mentioned, that game last night. And he was a catalyst to their success, being really aggressive. Wynn comes out to get a breather. And as Steve Forbes was telling us today, he hates coming out of the lineup at any time, whether you try to get him a rest or not. He doesn't like leaving leave him the floor. This will get him to the next TV timeout with a little extra rest on that bench. Flying rebound in there by Esther. Esther's going to take a three straight away. Got it. Chuck Esther. And the lead swells to seven. A timeout as... What are you looking to get more out of your team right now? we got to take better shots. We're settling for jump shots. We, we talked about attacking the rim and throwing it in the post, and we haven't done that yet. We're just, we're just playing too uh, hyper right now. we got to settle down, share the ball. We're just not doing a very good job on offense. Thanks, Coach. Back to the action and back to DeSante Bradford. Again, one of the points. A nice crossover dribble, and he takes it to the hole. Rebound will come off to Etheridge. So they got a better shot there. and should not finish with it. It's been the box with the good shots, including four from long range. Nice hustle, partner. Here's Etheridge again. By a three-pointer. Ball knocked up in the air, and the loose ball comes to Pryor. Nice hustle by Chuck Esther. I got back there quicker than Steve Forbes got to me as I stand over there. <laughs> you did good. <laughs> you did good. But he's, he's right. I mean, his team right now, they're playing tight. We saw them play last night. They played much freer. Uh, they played much more aggressive and attacking. And I think one of the concerns that I had in this game was that they would settle for those jump shots. They wouldn't be aggressive. They wouldn't attack the interior of the mox. And I, and I think you've got to go two length. You've got to go through contact, and you've got to be able to try to finish over the top of it. They haven't made a shot inside the three-point arc so far in this game. And now they've got Gwynn coming back in. As he set out about a minute and a half. Merriweather, who played very little last night. Here's the big guy, Jerkin. He's going to go straight up here. Short though. Let's well, see, everything is being up over the top. Instead of going through contact, instead of getting deeper post position, instead of trying to go towards the rim. Here's the swing on a runner. Got his own miss, nobody boxed out. And he scores for the first time tonight. And he's had some big, big games against ETSU. They had 25 and 11. And overall in the season, and he might not in the other way. Yeah, average 27 and eight and a half. I mean, he, he, he's even up. There he goes. What you're talking about. You got that size underneath, and Jerkin sometimes has got great soft touch. Don't worry about your touch. Be aggressive. Finish at the iron. Seven footer. Robertson drives. And loose ball, Oldham trying to get to it, but it's Bello. Look out, look out. Deuce Bello. He can jump out of the gym if you give him a chance. I think it would have gotten higher that time, but he was trying to find the handle on the dribble. Still slams it home to cut the lead to five. And the foul is going to be on Bradford. Let's take you back to Bello. Well, I, what I love about this back-to-back -back possessions, Jerkin, the screen, the roll to the rim, helps side defense slow and rotating over. And if you're slow rotating over and it's a seven-footer, this is what's going to happen. Nice job. And then the defense gets, you know, it's amazing how that happens. You get a good play at the offensive end, you get in the rim, a little bit of energy, you get a steal, now you get another dunk. Yeah. 
Durkin, a transfer from Indiana where he played very little before an injury and the transfer. And that's going to be a foul on the follow through on a three point shot. And, and no need to do that. I mean, Deuce Bellow is long enough, athletic enough, where you just jump straight up and down. You can't go through and make the contact and then send him to the free throw line. Eric Robertson's going to get three out of this. Eric well, Robertson's number, I mean, he shoots the ball so well from the outside. 40% on the season. You mentioned 79 made three-point shots. But it's pretty much all that he does. I mean, he, he doesn't get to the free throw line often. He's had three straight seasons now for the Mocs where he shot better than 40% from beyond the arc. He's doing a kick from the free throw line right now. To make this a three point play to give him six for the game. And stretch the lead back to eight. He does. 13. We've got 925 or nothing in the half. Playing back in there. Remember, he had two fouls in the first little over a minute of the game. Win going up against Toyo. He draws a foul. Let's see. Part of that free throw disparity that we touched on in their first two meetings, I think, is because of the hesitation that we saw in the beginning of this game. Those are more of the type of plays that you need if you're a Bucks fan. Going through the contact, not being afraid of the shot blocker. And if there's anyone on the court that's not going to be afraid of the shot blocker, it's the man at the free throw line right now. Chattanooga in the two regular season games, plus 25 from the free throw line. And they lost those two games by a total of 18 points. So thus the disparity from the strike had a big... Impacts on the outcome of those games. Win short on the second one. I was shocked the other day that when you told me you had the same outfit Gilon did at shooter on there. My Tupac t shirt? Yeah, Tupac. He had the, 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 the tight sweats, the skinny, skinny sweats. Skinny sweats. <laughs> yeah. It was amazing. I mean, we both wore the same shirt. I mean, you let me stay at your house, so I knew you had a bunch of that stuff right around your closet. <laughs> I mean, you haven't lived until you've been able to see your house. I mean, I've learned so much about you in the last seven days. Way too much, probably. <laughs> My so-called friends were part of the problem. Oh, they're great. Wonderful. Janet's a wonderful lady. <laughs> they feed the big guy in the post. Looking to try to get it over. One number five over the other, and he did. He got it over Toyo. Jerkin with four. Toyo, one of the best shot blockers in the league, but he knows he's got no chance there in that position. Little half hook, and we, I mentioned the touch that Jerkin has. Pryor, pull-up jumper. Got it. Greg Pryor with six. The lead is seven with eight to go and a half. Had a steal with that McLean five win open short on a three. Nice lead pass inside to the big fella. Toyo hammers it home. Great look by Pryor. That pass had eyes and speed on it. Bellow going to work. Trying to get it over to Jerkin. Goes out of bounds as we get a timeout with 706 remaining. Nine point lead for the Mox and out in transition. You mentioned it eyes. It found the right man and he was able to, but it's pretty good. <laughs> Steph Curry. And of course, only one of those schools still in the Southern Conference. And these two young ladies that I think are either editing the farm file or they're looking up who Hot Rod Hunley is. <laughs> one of the two, I'm not sure. <laughs> I think they're probably editing it. <laughs> Something that we didn't think we'd see tonight, we just saw. A shot clock A shot violation. Clock violation exactly. 
Now, it's been a pretty clean game so far. Just the second turnover for East Tennessee State. Three for Chattanooga. Esker on the outside. He's hit one three pointer out there. Eight on the shot clock. Twain back pedals. He better four pedal. There goes from way out. That one was from the Biltmore. He missed everything. <laughs> we didn't get there. We didn't get there. I wanted to get there with you. Oh, man, it's a nice place. I'll tell you what, though, the defense has been nice from Cromer. Doing a nice job staying attached to McLean, not giving him any open looks. As we mentioned, he had such great success in both meetings this year. So to speak, of ask, but what a cool downtown. Cromer to draw a foul. And he'll go to the lap. Great location for the SoCon tournament. I went I went to the early bird cafe today, or early bird eatery, breakfast spot there. It's unbelievable. Everything that they serve there is like raised within like 10 miles, I think. That's perfect. And Cromer knocks down the free throw. That's his first point. Best berry jam I've ever had. It was so I knew good. You ate a couple of times today, it, but I didn't know you went there. It was so good that I gave a piece of my toast, one slice of my toast, <laughs> to, to our producer, Jim Gallardo, uh -huh. and said, "You need to eat this and try this." And I don't give food away off my plate very often. <laughs> and our statistician J.D. Rutledge said, "Wish I'd have come with you. <laughs> you can see him just drooling." Over yeah, where were you, J.D.? <laughs> now I'll make up for it in Nashville. Don't worry. You and I start in Champ Week here, then we head off to Nashville for the SEC tournament. It'll be a fun week. You'll be sick of me by Sunday. You said I wasn't already. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Maybe slightly. <laughs> we started this excursion last Friday. Yeah, just At Georgia and Alabama, and then kept you up a little bit too late on Saturday night, and then we came here to Ashton. I'll tell you what, this game has kind of come to a screeching halt, though. We yeah. talked about tempo and how fast these guys were going to get after it. Much lower scoring game than either one of their first two meetings. And I think that, that just speaks to the familiarity that these two programs have with one another. The detail that we saw in both scouting reports. And Pryor picks up the foul. It's his first. Matt McCall in his first year. He's at Florida with Billy Donovan. He was talking about his wife today, Allison, was going to make it to the tournament. He said, I don't know if she'd make it or not because we got two little girls, Brooklyn two and Kylie six months, and we said we needed a babysitter. So I called my sister and he said, you babysit, my wife can make it to the game. I'm assuming she made it. No, they didn't fly her in, though. They yeah. flew in the babysitter. That's when you know it's big. Yeah. Well, it's a big Trip night. Trip to the dance. It's a big it's night for both these two coaches. And Matt McCall was even talking to him about the influence. He said he spoke with Billy Donovan last night. So I asked him, you know, we had the conversation about getting ready for a championship game. And well, so many, that, so much that he learned from at Florida. But we're talking to him. He said he actually learned maybe the most last year when Florida struggled. He said it's easy when you're going undefeated in the SEC and you're winning 30. You're, you're winning yeah. 30 games, going to Final Fours, national championships. Not so fun when you're 16 and 17. But that's what helps prepare you. You learn from those experiences. You grow from them and you get better. What a job he's done the first year as well, head I, coach here. And, and look, to say that Chattanooga should be here, I think that's what everybody expected. They expected, expected them to be here. But without the conference preseason player of the year, now, that probably wasn't expected. And, of course, we're talking about Casey Jones, the preseason player of the year, and the senior guard forward as the medical redshirt after dislocating his ankle. Did played that, played just December. eight games. Yeah. He was a leading scorer for eight games. And McLean with the free throw. There's the WCC championship coming up. By you Gonzaga. Five years in a row, I was in Las Vegas enjoying that festivities, a great crew out there this year, but BYU, Gonzaga, Gonzaga's not a sure thing. 
They got to play their way in, I think. St. Mary's has been outstanding all year long, but the, the one team they didn't want to see was Pepperdine. Pepperdine has beaten twice this year. They've got a point guard by the name of Jeremy Major coming off a career high. The other night actually coached him on the AAU circuit. He's really aggressive, super fast, and he's caused the Gales some issues. The game's going on right now. As a matter of fact, on ESPN. There was a case of Jerkin getting in too deep for his size and missed what should have been an easy shot. Astrid from the elbow. Got it. Uh, see, I, I like when they can get him free at the elbow area because he can knock down that shot with consistency And if you rush at him because you're a little bit slow He's gonna be able to attack the rim. That's a bad landing by Pryor a ten-point lead. They might add to it here And they will with Toya Timeout as the lead is swelled to 12 Chattanooga with 421 at least Tennessee State, I think, again, I think they're just being complacent and they're forcing it. They're starting to force it a little bit because of frustration, not getting easy shots. They're trying to throw the ball up over the top. They've had those two turnovers in the last four possessions. Settle it down. Plenty of time in this game. Playing on the drive. Banks trying to tip it in. And now we've got a jump ball and the arrow will stay with the Buccaneers. Yeah, he should have dunked that back through though. I mean, and that's just, that kind of just shows you where they're at right now. That aggressiveness that we saw last night, we're not seeing. No. If you're Banks, you're up above the rim, just go home and slam it in. They had a couple of big leads. They let Furman back in the game last night and then they stretched it back out and up eventually winning by eight. There's a little desperation that time by Roma. This is his first field goal. And, and much needed. He's, he is one of their consistent scorers, and so much of what he does is attacking off the bounce, whether it's mid range jump shot or getting to the paint. Let's see if they can get a stop on the other end. Oh, answer is no. Great back cut. Beautiful floor spacing, and when you pressure out as much as East Tennessee State is going to do, sometimes they're going to get caught, and that's exactly what happened. Quarterfinal game. Burroughs Cook had five. Last night he had four. He's got five right now here in the first half off the bench. And again, Cromer on the drive, back to back buckets by TJ Cromer. Here's where it comes down to, and this is what you just talked about the last possession. They got to string together a couple stops and then continue this momentum they have at the offensive end. I think if you get this thing down to about five, you're for a really good goal to the break. And then Olin pulls up and knocks one down just inside the three point line. And he is confident. Aggressive, he looks to score right away. One for ten last night. He doesn't care. He's just coming in, stepping in, trying to shoot the ball. The senior transfer from UT Martin. Bella. And a double team ends up on the deck without a basket and without the ball. Part of the problem with Bella is he makes adjustments in the air with the ball because he's trying to avoid contact. Just go through the contact. And a whistle and a foul. And we remind you of four playoff teams highlight our NBA Wednesday doubleheader presented by State Farm at 7. The Grizz and the Celtics get together at 9.30. Clippers against OKC. Coverage starts with NBA countdown charged by the two at 7.30. And both games are on ESPN. Also streaming live on Watch ESPN and the ESPN app. I guarantee you, Coach McCall will be watching that Clippers Thunder game. We're talking about the uh, Warriors Thunder game. And Sure, Coach Donovan's watching right now. He, he doesn't want me talking about that. No. Steph Curry. They play the Warriors great. They just can't beat them. Unbelievable. Now, you know, the college game, this is Billy Donovan, though. Now, you, you've known him longer than I did, but I got a chance to get to know him working with you last year in the SEC. He's one of the finest coaches we had at the college game. Yeah. Made a seamless transition into the NBA. Nice feed inside of Pryor. Got hammered. And they'll have to earn it from the free throw line. Good look by Toyo. That was the other way around earlier. It was prior to Toyo. This time it's Toyo to the guard underneath. And the opportunity to get a stop, and they're just trading baskets right now. And Deuce Bella slides over the contact prior. So good. You see that cut through the lane, and the defense just not talking. That was on Gwen. Gwen lost contact inside of his man. Prior three for three from the line. So often we look at those plays and we go, oh, well, you know, the help side rotation was slow getting over. And part of the reason why it was slow getting over there is because the guy that was supposed to be guarding him had no awareness, didn't talk, didn't communicate. you got to be able to communicate to allow your teammates to get over there to help you. Greg Pryor with eight. Lead back to 12 again. As 
we approach the two minute mark remaining the first half feet underneath again the ball is stripped away another ETSU turnover prior the trailer thought about a three the one thing you and I noted watching the mocks play was just their depth. They have they can bring guys off the bench and they don't skip a beat. They don't play much differently either. Even if they go big, it seems like they play the same way as they do when they got a smaller line. This guy is on the run. Win. And he ends up over the cheerleaders. And now a lob on the other end and a mistimed jump by Toyo. And that'll the fans will get on him. Well, an opportunity slam one home. And instead, uh, defensive coordinator of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they need some defensive stops right now because the Mocs have run this out to a 12 point lead. Either that or they need one of the other alums, Kenny Chesney, to come in here and just start a concert. <laughs> one of those two things. I'd sign up for the second one, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> Bradford on the drive. Saw him this summer at the Rose Bowl. Had a good friend, helped me out there. That was an unbelievable concert. First country concert ever inside the Rose Bowl, and Kenny absolutely rocked it. He does. Wherever yeah, he goes. I don't know how he walks the next day after he's done with the concert. I'll tell you that. He puts out as much energy as his team needs right now. His team can feed off of some of that Kenny energy as he hits the stage, because right now they're playing flat-footed. Robertson up off the window. Rebound. Comes off with an opportunity. There's a defensive stop now to get it down to single digits. If they score this trip. Wide open in the corner. Three-pointer. And nothing but white jerseys around for the rebound. There should be one shot right now. The Chattanooga. They're going to have a double-digit lead, it appears. At halftime. And your coach McCall will be really pleased right now. Your team was able to slow down and keep East Tennessee State out of transition. They didn't get a lot of looks in the open floor. And you got a 12 point lead. Prior, prior from beyond the arc. Eight players with points, as Sean just said, one of double figures. And they are 22 and 0 when they lead at halftime. They lead at halftime now, and the second half's underway. So ETSU's got to do something about this, or they're going to lose for the third time this year to the Mocs of Chattanooga. A trip to the NCAA tournament, one half away. We saw it a couple times last night where Chattanooga was unable to put away Western Carolina. And the lead was at one time 15, then it shrunk to got under about five or four. So if you're East Tennessee State University, that's what you got to focus on. But their attention to detail has to be at this end of the floor because they have not played their normal defense. And it's one of the things that Coach Forbes talked about. Toyo fed inside the prior, prior. Looking to draw a foul and didn't, and Bellow's the guy that's on the deck. Deuce Bellow, slow to get up. See on the back cut, nice job spinning away from pressure. Well, the problem with jumping that high is you can have some bad landings. I think that's Deuce's problem. Well, he jumps awkwardly so often, I mean, he's probably used to falling <laughs> on the floor like that. Hey, it's, it's no different than some of the layups we've seen out of him tonight. Yeah, the that's true. And he'll go sit down, but yeah, he did fall on that left hand side. I think he's okay. The way he walked over to the bench, it was almost like, hey, we had a fast break situation. They stopped it because I was back on the floor. Maybe I should have bounced up a little quicker. Oh, now it's not a good inbound pass. And see, he's fine. I mean, Deuce Bell is coming back into the game right now. So. In that situation, you can't sit there and go, hey, I got hurt, I'm laying on the ground, and then get up and try to walk your way back. You gotta get subbed out of the game, and you just killed the momentum of your fast break that you had opportunity for for the Bucks. Esther on the outside, and the rebound off to Banks. Banks was all scoreless in the first half. He had a great game last night. He didn't even take a shot. I mean, I thought the tip in, I think they could have counted as a shot. They did not. There's a three that goes. Lester Wilson. His 57 three of the year, so he's a guy that can get hot and help the cause. And 
And he comes right back and picks up a foul. You, know, you mentioned Lester Wilson. Great story for him. I mean, offseason microfracture surgery that really delayed his process. In his first three years, he averaged more than 10 points per game every game. And he played an average of minimum average of 22 minutes per game. And that was his sophomore campaign. But his minutes have been cut in his half. His production has increasingly dropped. But all he keeps telling Coach Forbes is, all I want to do is win. And it's a byproduct of why this team is here in this, this game right now. It's because the buy-in factor. He's got 1,366 career points. So he's been a big factor, as you said, for the whole time he's been there. Torio, just an easy path to the basket. And this little slip screen, roll the rim, nobody's there. And an easy dunk. I want to get more excited on the dunk, but I need him to throw it down. We're going to hang on the rim a little bit. Well, he's got to just drop that one in. And Cromer has it knocked away by Robertson. Watch this. Good, good action up top. Little screen. Just roll right to the rim. Nobody rotates over. And then just the easy flush. My dad keeps telling me, hey, Sean, get excited about the dunk. Uh, that's not one, Pop. I'm sorry. You're gonna, you're, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hang you on for a little while longer. you got to keep watching. That's right. I know the Bachelor women tell all things going on tonight, but hopefully mom's letting you watch some hoop. This McClain on the outside. He missed a three. I know you're a big team JoJo guy, Brad, and excited to see what happens next week on The Bachelor after the champ week is over. My wife and daughter are, but I don't, I don't know anything else about it. Other than I guess he chooses one next week, right? Right. Whatever. Well, that's what I've been told. Yeah. Whistle on a foul on the dribble. That's going to be on uh, Gwynn. Second one on Geelong Gwynn. I think if they ever have any chance, he's got to become involved in the offense big time. Well, they've done a good job trying to deny him the ball as much as possible and get him outside of their comfort zone. Just as, just as by the way, that they've done to McLean. McLean hasn't got the ball at all, really, in the first half. Just those three points that he has. So both teams know who the other team hurt him in the two regular season games and have done a nice job taking that away. Here is Gwen on the break, though. Get out in the open floor and get up. Now you get in the rim a little bit. And let's see if it bleeds over to the defensive end of the floor. This is where it's got to start. If the Bucks don't buy in down here, if they don't string together stops, their defense can lead the offense where you don't have to play in the half court. You're going to say the Bucks need to stop here. I could do that too if you want me to. Here's McLean. That time he got free. And see, that's the problem though. It's just a momentum killer. You get it. You get a steal. You get a dunk. You come back and you allow them to score again. Right. You look up at the scoreboard and go, man, we're still down 11 right now. Bradford in some traffic, and he got the roll. This Andre Bradford was six. He had 15 last night in the win over Furman. Let's see if they can lock down defensively. Yeah, they got a stop. Get the lead cut to seven if they score this trip. Cromer, nice pass in low. And finally, a score underneath by Banks. Isaac Banks, first basket. Four and a half minutes into the half. He's been sliced down to seven. Robertson, and he's hit on a three-point shot by Gwynn. And he'll go to the line when we come back. 15-20 remaining in the ball game. 42-35. Robertson will step to the free-throw line after being fouled by Gwynn. And this is the second time Eric Robertson's been awarded three free-throws. on Someone fouling him outside the arc. And he hit the first three. I've been watching so many basketball games. I forget which one it was that I was watching, but the coach was keeping track of deflections, and the other thing they kept track of was turkeys. Any other turkeys are? No. 
It's like bowling, right? You get three strikes in a row. Oh, okay. So they're trying to get three stops in a row. And, and, and I love that. I, I'm going to take that, turkeys. and I'm going to use it. All right. And right now, Steve Forbes' team, they need some turkeys. He needs a flock of turkeys. All right, you get one stop, and then you foul on a three-pointer, and you allow them to go to the free-throw line and gain some more points at the strike. But if you're going to have a chance to get back in this game, now you're down 10 again. you got to string together. you got to give me a turkey. Give me a couple turkeys. I'm not sure flock's the right term for turkeys. I'm sure somebody will let me know that that's not the case. Nice drive by Bradford. Bradford's got eight. Okay, now we're looking for a turkey. I'm getting hungry again. <laughs> McLean into traffic. Right hand shot on the left hand side. Missed it. It was a foul on the rebound. And it's going to go against Lester Wilson, I think. That's his third. East Tennessee State last night. That's what they did against Furman defensively. To win that one by eight. Now they're trying to make up an eight-point deficit. Holmes going to take it on the outside. Nice looking stroke for three. Especially when you can get your feet set and you realize there's no one within 15 feet of you. And just no, no closeout, no sense of urgency, no sense of purpose. At the defense end, as far as fighting and playing with your hair on fire. There's one guy that's been working hard, and that's Radford. Yep. And he was forced to because Petey McLean had two fouls in the opening 70 seconds or so of the game. So he's been running the point quite a bit throughout this matchup, and uh, he's in double figures. Well, when he gets in double figures, too, it usually means great things for East Tennessee State. He's done it 11 times this year. They're 9 and 2 in those games. One of their losses, though, guess who it came against? Chattanooga. One of two in the regular season, but he does complete a three-point play. He's the leading scorer right now for the Bucks. Again in single digits, trailing by eight. And Bello bumps McLean. It's his third foul. That's amazing. You, you think about these, this game and you think about these two first-year head coaches. You know how difficult it is to come in in year one and lay down the foundation of your program, how you want to execute, and to get buy-in from everybody I'm there? I was going to say, just to get the attention of the guys and have everybody on the same page. And you turn over in the coaching staff and you, you inherit players and you see four of you go out and get a couple of fifth-year guys that have been around a little bit. Get them to buy in to, to get to this moment. Steve will tell us that's not rare for him because he spent 11 years in the Juco ranks, so the turnover seemed to be every year. But uh, we knew it well as an assistant with Bruce Pearl at Tennessee before the junior college at Wichita State and now here in year one and a 23 win campaign so far. And Coach McCall, Conference Coach of the Year, 28 wins already. Looking for 29 so that he can rest assured on Sunday that the name comes popping up on the screen. Ezzy missed on the hook. Nice rebound by Merriweather. And here's Bradford. This time he kicks it out, and Bella will try three. And he got the roll. Strange looking position to get that shot to drop from the baseline, but he did. Down to five. Looking for a turkey. <laughs> gobble, gobble. <laughs> and all, uh, this crowd's been quiet all night long. These East Tennessee State fans. Wanted to get into it. A made shot here will make this building erupt. Kromer's fouled. Shot goes in, but basket's not going to count. The drive down the middle of the lane, the kick out. A little hesitation in the closeout. The defensive player had lost vision of his man, completely turned around watching the ball. That's what caused the delay. Talk about getting the shooter's bounce on that shot. 
You could take 50 of those from over there, and 49 of them wouldn't go in that way. Anyway. Oh, great inbound play as Merriweather got loose. And guess what? It's a three-point game. Here we go, partner. 8-0 run by ETSU. And timeout taken by Chattanooga. All of a sudden, there's a little bit of juice in U.S. Cellular Center here in Asheville. Coach McCall said earlier in D.C. According to Joe Lenardi, North Carolina and Virginia, Still projected to be number one seed. You buy it? Yeah, you know what? I love Virginia, and I love the way they defend right now. I think Michigan State's got to be a one seed, though. And you know, it's, it's tough when you don't win your regular season conference, but watching the Spartans play, if they're a two seed and I'm a one, I'm looking at the other half of my bracket going, no thank you. <laughs> Tom Izzo in March. Yeah. Uh -uh. Denzel Valentine, I'm good. Kept alive on the baseline by Esther. They'll get a second shot clock out of this. That could have been a big rebound for ETSU where they pulled it down on the trailing by three. Seven consecutive makes, though, for the Bucks. That's what's brought them so close here. Yeah, but, they, but what's helped is the fact that they've got buy-in buy down here. Their energy level's better. Here's a long three again. That one won't go, and it's Merriweather with another rebound. A chance to cut the lead to one or tie this trip. And it's Merriweather doing it himself. 48-47. 10 0 run by the Buccaneers. And this is where the pressure builds. Remember, Matt McCall said there's going to be runs. You have to put up with the pressure. Let's see if his team can do that. Holden draws a foul on an E. It's going to be on Kroger. The, the outstanding movement in the open floor. The Oldham's at the free throw line for Chattanooga. His first trip there was successful. As Sean shows good hustle on the way back to the table. I guess he's getting two paychecks tonight. Olin got a both. A little breathing room for the Mox after the great run by ETSU. As they are now shooting 51% for the ball game. Kroger tried to go up and it strips. And it'll still be Bucks ball out of bounds. So one of the adjustments that he just made there was defensively. They went to the zone. We saw them work on that at practice. Where they would shift out and go into basically a 1-3-1 one zone. Sometimes changing defense can get the offense to play on their heels. Not this time. Merriweather has hit three baskets in the second half. And for the second time, he's kept the lead to one. And the second time, too, on the out-of-bounds underneath. They throw the ball into him and he scores. Esther missed a three. Cromer with a rebound. Outlet to Bello. Tough catch. Saved it. Merriweather, that would have been his fourth basket in a row, but he missed it close. It would have given them the lead. And now McLean through a double team. Got the roll. The feel of this energy in the building has picked up. One of these teams is about 10 minutes away from finding out that they're going to go in the NCAA tournament. Mayweather, the last three Bucks baskets have been his. You see a 1 1 3 defense. Gwynn fouled on a three, or is it going to be away from the basket? I think it's away from the basket on the screen that was being set by Deuce Pillow. Yeah. Right, coming up after the nice WCC semifinals on the Sports Center at night, Bucci and Nicole Briscoe. They have all the Champ Week highlights. A look back at Peyton Manning, who retired today. Did that happen? Just a little bit. Sports Center at night after Pepperdine St. Mary's right here at ESPN streaming live on Watch ESPN and the ESPN app. I thought that speech was outstanding. It was incredible. Inside, Bradford missed in close. He almost had a second chance at it as well. Kick out. 
the ball movement went too many passes that time. Robertson threw it away. Win on a runner. Short on that one a little bit. So a couple opportunities to again get the lead down to one. And the Bucks missed them both. What I liked about what East Tennessee State is doing, they continue to attack. They're not just settling for perimeter shots. Everything they've been doing to get back in this game has started here and then carrying that aggressive disorder, including Esther's drive right there. Esther's first bucket of the second half. And they get a little more breathing room again. Back to five. Elon Gwynn has nine points in the game. Bradford's the leading scorer, and he continues to stretch out that lead with a huge three-pointer right there. Big-time shot in a big-time moment. We got ourselves a two-point game here at the SoCo. Throughout this game, with the exception of the opening minute, and that is, there's only one time out left for Steve Forbes. And you know how difficult it is so often we've seen it teams that have to fight their way back into a game They get close, but they don't quite get over the top of the mountain So far the Bucks have not gotten over the top of the mountain Ooh, I didn't know if that three had a chance, but it did for Robertson Let's see now you got a two-point game now it's back to five and you're still climbing yeah. We hit a three a moment ago. Get it close. This guy is not afraid to shoot at any moment from any spot. Gives it up to Bellow on the baseline. Ball knocked out of bounds. Again, Bellow's on the deck. I was surprised that there was not a foul call on that drive. There looked like a lot of contact, and Deuce Bellow could have been at the line. But if, if you're the Bucks, you're happy. You've scored the last two times you've gone out of bounds underneath. Mayweather got, Merriweather got free last time. He's got Oldham on him right now. That was a dangerous inbound pass. And now six to shoot. There it goes. Way short. Air ball pulled down by Oldham. Wide open, wind out of three. Win the rebound and going coast to coast with it. Win with 11 as we're at seven and a half to play. Chattanooga by three. Burroughs cooking some traffic and he draws a foul. But moving forward into Nashville for the SEC tournament, but you think about that finish Florida Gulf Coast yesterday We could have that same kind of finish. It's been tight throughout here in the second half Jonathan Burroughs cook On his average right now Six points a game I mentioned the free throw disparity between these teams plus ten right now in points at the free throw line Make it 11 in what is a five-point game. So the storyline that we saw in the first two meetings is carrying through. Bradford and Kroler play catch out on top. Bradford got a look. That was halfway down. Came out. Kept alive there. Isaac Banks. A fresh shot clock. For the Buccaneers at the seven minute mark. Gilon is hiding in the corner. Bradford on a runner. Again, had one rim out. Right? They're playing for Bradford right now, which kind of surprises me. I know he's had the hot hand tonight. But I think you need your clutch player and your clutch moments. You want the ball in the hands of the baddest dude on the court. And the baddest buck all year long has been G Long. G Long win. Averaging 18 and a half points a game tonight. He's got 11 right now. 
Well, as I said a few minutes ago, I think they're going to need his scoring at some time if they're to have any chance. There's some nice Whoa. hustle on defense. And the scorer's table just got a surprise over there. So do some of the officials. I hope he's all right. Conference. He looked like Dean Ambrose in the WWE <laughs> flying through the ropes. <laughs> Welcome to the Ambrose Asylum, right. folks. Look out. Whoa. Glad he's all right. Somebody took a charge over there. Well, we know it wouldn't be you. Your pass partner got laid out a couple of times, and you just looked down and went, all right. I just want to make sure the players are okay. I don't care about my partners. <laughs> Everybody appears to be okay. But with all that hustle, including the defensive play by the Bucks, they got the ball back. Down by five. Someone on the double team, Gwynn out on top. Trying to feed it back inside of Merriweather. And Merriweather had it swatted in the air, blocked by Toyo, the player of the year in this conference. And that was a huge defensive play right there. And his length and ability to alter shots has been a huge advantage all season long for the Mox. His fourth block shot of this game. Nice knees, ball moving out on top. Seven on the shot clock. Going to be an offensive foul. Trey McClain. The thing about Merriweather, too, is he's been injured. He's this time finally getting back into the mix. Great athlete. And you're seeing him leave an imprint now at both ends of the floor. The reason this game's so tight here in the second half is Merriweather's been aggressive, getting to the basket, and then that time defensively putting himself in position. He's going to try a three. Got it. His first three of the night. It's a big one. Only cut off on the baseline. Fire. I think Green got a hand on that ball, and now they got a chance to tie things up. Or lead if that goes. Good look by Wilson. You and I were talking during the break. What would this game be like if just once the Buccaneers got at least a one point lead? The pressure would be on the box. And every time they've had a chance, they let it slip through their fingers. Six on the shot clock. Lane, long three. Got it! Wow, what a shot. That possession looked like it was going nowhere. nowhere. Wow. First. That was a deep three by Trey McLean for the trade. And a five-point advantage. Cromer, I thought he got that a foul. foul. This could be a technical. Oh, boy. Can't lose your head in that moment, but that was that was a foul. There might be two and there's technicals. Another technical. There's another one. One on Cromer, one on Steve Forbes. As Ray Natilli had heard too much from both player and coach. But that, I thought that, that, that was from where, all the way. From, from where, where you and I were sitting. Watching. And now you've got basketballs being thrown down on the floor, which you can't have that happening. I know they're little foam balls, but you still can't be throwing stuff out on the floor. Uh, watch on the catch here. I mean, the contact with the lower body, with the elbow. The ball didn't even get halfway to the hoop. I mean. But then the reaction, there's the first tee. And Steve Forbes is following Ray Tilly all the way to midcourt. And he's going to turn around right about there and say that's enough and put up another one. As Pryor hits the free throw. 
Free throw the Briars missed tonight. He's five by uh, six from the strike. And he'll step up again. And this is a big moment in this game. Everything, the emotion of it. And there's no doubt. I mean, you and I both thought as soon as that ball, when, when the ball goes up and it's not blocked. And it doesn't get but maybe a little bit over halfway to the hoop. Probably good indication there's some contact. The Briar got three out of four. And now possession is Chattanooga's too. So a swing there to make it an eight-point game at the four-minute mark. And that eight point might go to double digits again if they score now with possession of the ball here as we're under four to go. Might go to more than ten. Three pointer off the mark. Oldham up. Doesn't get the roll. Win with a tough rebound. They got to play with a sense of purpose and energy right now. You can't waste a lot of time being patient against the zone. Want to get a good look, but you want to be aggressive. Wilmer's going to try another three from the same spot. That time he didn't get fouled. Let's see, now you just slow it down a little bit as a Chattanooga. No need to be in a hurry. Leads back out to eight. The clock is your friend. Box have two timeouts remaining. Buccaneer is just one. Sean said right now, you just want to waste some clock and then take a shot. That one was even too early, probably. And Gwynn is fouled by Olam after he picked up the rebound. Still a chance, but time is running out for ETSU. Collinsworth is a triple-double threat almost every game for BYU. They'll need him to step up. Domanis Sabonis maintaining the interior presence for the Gonzaga Bulldogs. I think at this point in time, in a rare position, they still have to play their way into the NCAA tournament. Get a backward pressure from the box as Bellow's going to go with a free throw lap. Now you and I were talking, uh, you, you look at where this game was at, you get those two technical fouls, and then all of a sudden creates this separation, this eight-point deficit right now, and still plenty of time with three minutes left to go. A great place to get some points is at the free throw line, and Deuce Bellow just left one on the board. He's left two out there, and there's three attempts. Tonight. East Tennessee State four out of eight. We mentioned in the first two regular season games, plus 25. Plus 14 in mates right now. And Bell missed them both. And you just wonder how much mentally was taken out of the Bucks on that on those two technicals. I mean, they don't look like the same team. They had it down to 57, 59, 57. And since then, they've come down. They've missed their last three shots. They've missed their last two free throws. But still, it's out there. An eight-point game with two and a half to go. Zulon Gwynn has been very passive in the second half. And that one's going against him. And he finally turns the corner, looks to be aggressive, and instead it becomes a charge. And his fourth. And the air has completely come out of the Bucks bubble. I mean, it, it, they're shaking their head. Their body language is poor right now. It's like they came out here with the T-shirt gun and it like this. Yep. Oldham got it by Gwen, and if Gwen fouls him, it'll be his fifth, but it's going to be a turnover instead on Oldham. Again, sense of energy, sense of purpose, get the life back in the building. You make a three-point shot here, all of a sudden things feel a lot better. Still plenty of time with over two to go. Gwen is 35 feet away from the basket. He's going up with it anyway. Underneath, an offensive rebound by Wilson, and he was fouled. And then a great opportunity to get an old. 
And then off the glass foul and one opportunity. Could have got it to 65-60. Instead, now you got to go to a 6 0 run right now for the Mox. They've only made one out of the last seven. So that 6 0, a big part of that has been the free throw line. And meanwhile, the free throw line has not been kind at all to East Tennessee State. Bello missed his last two, and now Wilson, a 73% free throw shooter, gets one of two. Court pressure now for the Buccaneers. Robinson gets it into the front court. A double team hand ball loose. Oldham finds the handle though. Good poke away. There is a steal by Bell. I'm not sure he needed that double pump move after the steal. Maybe just a layup or a, or a slam dunk. A elite level athlete, but he makes so many random adjustments in air that he increases the degree of difficulty on layups beyond that of any player we've seen in person this year. I agree with you. Right now, he wishes he would not have added to that degree of difficulty because it could have been 65 to 60, and he wouldn't have picked up his fourth foul. It's been an amazing season for both these two first-year head coaches. And to have the success that they've had, to bring their teams together. They were the top two teams in the regular season. They fought their way through the conference tournament to earn the right to play for the championship tonight. And like the first two meetings, right now, it looks like Coach McCall's group is going to walk out of here with the automatic bid and not have to worry about whether or not they'd be on the bubble. There's a layup by Cromer. Finally, they break the drought and field goals. They get it back to five. Again, full court pressure. Cromer trying to come up with a steal without fouling on Breyer. Does a pretty good job. Breyer, though, leaves it underneath. And a missed shot, but a foul will send Toyo to the free throw line. And now we've got more things being thrown on the floor. And that's the second time we've seen that. Fouls on Wilson on that last drive. He wants the drive, the dump down underneath. And he got him down low on, underneath on the foul. He swiped down, but there's no need to. Oyo rips the free throw. He mentioned second time in as many years that he's been named the SoCon Defensive Player of the Year, noted for his ability to block shots, but he's had some big games as well. 420 plus point games on the season. Including one of the regular season matchups with ETSU. Alright, so if anything else comes out of the stands, the team's gonna suffer. And they've already suffered two technicals. Toyo got both three throws. One minute, now remaining. Seven point game. Win backs up. Let's fly with a three. Battle for the rebound is won by Chattanooga, and then Bello fouls him and fouls out. And this is his last game in that uniform. A lot of frustration right now for East Tennessee State. Deuce Bellow's career started at Baylor. Went to Missouri and ends up here at East Tennessee State. He's a big part of their success throughout the course of the regular season. They'll spend the last 52 seconds over there after a hug from Coach Forbes on the bench as Esther knocks down the free throw. Look at how this team made this leap so quick. You look at the transfers, got Bellow, Gwynn, and Jerkin. All coming from major programs. Esther missed the second and knowing it wasn't going to go in for the lane violation. Trying to chase down his own miss. So 51.6 remaining.
Already a school record for Chattanooga, 28 wins. It looks like it's going to be number 29. Unless the Bucks can do something about this in a hurry. Cromer, he got a three. There's the last time out. Taken by ETSU. Gets it down to five, and now the foul party is going to start. Sweet 16. Ironically, <laughs> in Matt McCall's first year, he beat Georgia and Illinois in the regular season. So here we go, 45.7. And full court heat coming for the Bucks. And they immediately foul Trey McClain, who has hit one and missed one from the free throw line tonight. The foul is on Cromer. I think for a second, G. Long Gwynn thought it was his fifth. He's standing over there by the coach. And he can remain on the floor because it was Cromer who fouled him. Lane with the free throw. He has not had his best night. Has not shot the ball well from the field. But in moments where his team is needed, he stepped up and he's found other ways to contribute. He's got three assists. He's got six rebounds. And that'll make it 12 points. Two big free throws right there. Bradford trying to preserve as much time as possible on the inbound. Homer, they know they've got to. You got to go. You got to go, or you got to. Shoot a three from wherever. Cromer had to hit the last one, not this time. And it's Oldham with a rebound. And now Oldham will be fouled with 28 seconds from it. Now, Coach McCall in his first season. You know, he, he came over to talk to us. We mentioned his relationship, how close he was with Billy Donovan, all the time that he spent down with him, all the notes and everything. He's like, well, when he started his job, someone said, hey, you know, he, he kind of like put everything in. You're like Billy Donovan. He goes, why wouldn't I want to right. be Billy Donovan? <laughs> well, he's doing the things that Billy Donovan does. He'll lead a team to an NCAA tournament, and here he is in his first season getting it done, and he's done a great job with this group. They handled adversity. Casey Jones out. Early in the season, the team didn't miss a beat and just kept going on. And their process was pretty good tonight. And the result's going to be even better. We talked about it early. Play like we have all year to pick up the 28 wins we have. And a foul on Esther with 19.6 remaining. So, you know, it was worth spending the money on the babysitter, the flyer here. It's going to be a moment that not only will he remember forever his first time leading the team to an NCAA tournament, but for this group of kids that are around him. Is it getting better, really, your first year as a head coach here and your Southern Conference Coach of the Year, and you're going to the dance? It's not a bad year. It's a great year. And, and he's one of those young coaches that in college basketball, the landscape as it is, people will start paying much more attention to because of his leadership and you know, the women's team, they won the title here on Sunday. No school has ever taken the women's and the men's title in the Southern Conference. That's about to change. And forced jump ball, possession arrow will be in the Bucks direction. But the problem is there's 15 seconds left, and it's an eight-point difference. So this ball has got to go up just about as soon as it touches somebody's hand. They would love it to be Cromer or Gwen, I would think. They finally get it to Gwen, although he had to fight a teammate to get a handle on it. Now Wilson will try three, and he got it. But again, going to be too little, too late. Barring a miracle here. Oldham gets it in, and they foul. It's going to be Gwen Swift foul as they foul Trey McLean. So much like Bello, the other transfer. Geelong. Gwynn ends his career fouling out for ETSU with 9.1 seconds remaining. Provided great leadership at practice. How are the guys, the emotional guy on the team, there's no doubt about it. The frustration. Wanting so desperately, I talked to him after shooting around today. He said, you know, I've been in these situations before. I know what we have to do. I got I to gotta try to get my guys to get there. And tonight was a frustrating night for him. And it's going to be, end up being a frustrating night for East Tennessee State. Knowing what you have to do and pulling it off are two different things sometimes. Yo, yo. 
Three possession game, but it's got to go up right now. Cromer bounces off. Ball game. The Mucks of Chattanooga are going to the NCAA tournament. They don't have to worry about whether or not losing this game would have still preserved them a spot. They get an offer.